Foreman. This is KPFK Los Angeles, listener sponsored Pacifica Radio for all of Southern California. This is Folk Scene. I'm Howard Larman with Peter Cutler and Stephen Barker at the controls live from Studio A. Our guests are the Nashville Bluegrass Band. vocal and guitar pad in right mm-hmm. on mandolin and doing some vocals later I think yeah is Roland White Gene LeBay on bass and you hear his voice sneak in every once in a while and <laughs> nobody's looking Alan O'Brien on uh, banjo and vocal and Stuart Duncan on fiddle and um, occasional vocals I think and that is the Nashville Bluegrass Band who record for Sugar Hill Records and uh now, do I have this right? There are four albums on Sugar Hill, and there were three previous on Rounder? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And Five on Sugar Hill, if you include the one we did with Peter Rowan. Oh, yes. I f- forgot about that. How could I? Can, can uh, I, I suppose, Alan or, or Pat uh, tell us a little bit about how the uh, Nashville Bluegrass Band was founded? Well, uh, back in uh, late 84... Uh, there was a band. Well, actually, let me back up. In in '82, I was in a band called the Bluegrass Band, and we worked for a promoter up in the New Jersey named uh, Jeff Burns. 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 Jeff Burns. Jeff Burns. Oh, I was th- all I could think of was Jethro Burns, but I knew that <coughs> wasn't right. Anyhow, um, uh, he was putting together another country music tour, and this was going to be his big country music tour called uh, the Grand Old Country Music Tour. Headlined by Minnie Pearl and uh, Vernon Oxford was going to be on it, and uh, a dance troupe and a number of country acts from around the New York area. And uh, so he finally, over a period of time, he put this uh, this tour together. And uh, by late '84, he had it ready to go. But of course, the bluegrass band was no more. So I had this work and no band to do mm-hmm. it. And uh, so Pat and I had always had this dream of. You know, being able to put together a band of guys that played traditional music. And that was how we got started. We just started from there. 
No, the opening number was a Gillian Welch tune. Uh, who's uh, Gillian? I guess she lives in Nashville now, but she's from Pacific Palisades. I know. Yeah. Uh, did you uh, record this before she did, or did you find this on her record? How did you? You know, <clears throat> I think we recorded it before she did. I met her at uh, our agent's office. She has the same agent uh, mm -hmm. that we do, or did at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, was introduced to her. And I said, "She's a songwriter." I said, "Great, give me a tape." Mm -hmm. That song was on there, and a bunch of other good songs. Mm -hmm. And that song can be heard on their latest album called Unleashed on Sugar Hill. Mm -hmm. What song can you do next? Well, we can go ahead and feature that album uh, one more time. This is uh, old Tommy Gerald, uh, the great fiddle, mm -hmm. fiddler from North Carolina. <coughs> and uh, Alan, Alan found this on an old oh. LP lurking in his basement somewhere. <laughs> one of my favorite ones about the bow weevil. Dead man's tune. Be no grain red tonight. Oh, we've been told the farmer you need no more machine. I'll eat up all the old cotton. I can't buy no gasoline. Our guests live from KPFK Studio A are the Nashville Bluegrass Band, and they record for Sugar Hill Records. Now, you won a Grammy last year as well as 94? 90, was it 93? Uh, 93. 93 and 90, 95. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was 93, but this sheet here says 94. Oh, but well, I think well, that's well, when we received the album. Received it. it was for yeah. oh, the year 93, yeah. Right. Like we received the 95 and 96. And uh, you also won a Nerd Award, IBMA Awards, including Entertainer of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, do you tr travel out of Nashville a lot? Are you on the road like 10 months a year or something? Is no, no. I'd uh, maybe between 90 and 130 days a year, mm -hmm. kind of a average, something like that. Mm -hmm. Not too much. And I'm sure. We travel out of Nashville a lot, but we always come right back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like those short tours when yeah. you get home? From yeah, they're just weekends. We fly out and do days <clears throat> and come back. So we don't spend a lot of days on the road, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of working days on the road. <laughs> no, I've seen most of you on other records. You do a lot of studio work, too, as well. Well, yeah, we do other things, too. It mostly does a lot of 
a lot of sessions. You know, we do other things, you know. Mm-hmm. There's other things happening. That's Roland White talking. Yeah. And Roland used to be a resident here in Southern California, well known to... I, I lived in Coenga at one time. Really? Yeah, okay. In Burbank, just down the road there. Uh-huh. And uh, part of the Kentucky Colonels. Yeah. Our guests live from uh, Studio A are at the Nashville Bluegrass Band. What does it take to get you guys to do a record? Do, do you get a bunch of tunes together and say we're ready to make another record or does it's, the company come to you and say that's pretty much it yeah. it takes yeah. a miracle no not just kidding well yeah. once we have you no, know, once we have the agreement what we're going to do we just get the songs together and do it uh-huh. it's a lot of work you have to find good songs first <laughs> do you do you road test the songs before you go into a studio and sometimes and record? yeah, yeah we try to we do. you mean like perform live on stage yeah. we try to do as many of, as many of them that way as we can you know? uh-huh. we don't get to do them all but are there songs in the album you don't do? Because whatever reason, oh, always, Legion, they're always, Legion. Yeah. always yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do them all. You know, there are favorites, and you just the people like, and just kind of mm-hmm. stick with those. And mm-hmm. every once in a while, throw another one in. You know, it's always fun sometimes to bring bring back old songs that we did some years ago, mm-hmm. resurrect them. I think we're going to do that tonight. Okay, we got what, one one or so. What do you do next? Uh, next, we're going to do another song from the new record. We were talking about this one. Um, this one that Alan's going to sing, and it's a, a story about life on the road. Wh- whether you're a musician or a truck driver or anything that that takes you from home a lot, and, and you find yourself sometimes saying, "That's this is the last time I'm going to do that," mm-hmm. and then you find yourself back out there again. And uh, a fellow named Carl Jones wrote it. He's a very good songwriter from down in. Uh, North Georgia, I believe. Speaking of Georgia, it was also written uh, about or to Norman Blake. That's right. Oh, really? <coughs> yeah. It's called The Last uh, Time on the Norman's Road. Norman's been here. Last, last Time. Gonna burn my mouth, I'm tired of traveling I've been more miles than I know I'm feeling happy and I'm feeling sad It's my last time on the road Well, this old bluebird has seen some flying But now she's starting to slow She gave her best, I'm gonna let her rest last time on the road Seen a lot of days at a highway's pace and they take their toll on me There's a lot of things I've left behind I might have never seen Got a big white house with a back porch view that keeps on calling me I might not stay, but for now I'll say it's my last time on the road.
are guests of the Nashville Bluegrass Band. They record for uh, Sugar Hill Records, at least last uh, five records. Stuart mentioned the one with uh, Peter Rowan as well. Is on Sugar Hill. There were three earlier records on the Rounder label, and Stuart Duncan has a solo record on Rounder, and uh, Roland White has a solo record on Sugar Hill. Trying to get to you, and I think that covers your catalog, right? I think so. <laughs> uh, is there any one among you that you all lean on for arrangements, or is it pretty much a joint venture as far as arranging your number? It's a joint venture, Stuart. Helps a lot. He does a lot of instant arranging for us in rehearsals. Mm-hmm. And Bill Monroe. He's there, too. <laughs> I always look back to Bill Monroe. Mm-hmm. Now, Stuart, yeah, Stuart is a big, big help. Mm-hmm. He's very good. There's a lot of things that get dic- just almost um, dictated by the song itself. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. in, a, in a best case scenario, mm-hmm. it, they, um, they work themselves out. I understand. We're, we're working on one now that hasn't come so easily. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, 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 all the songs are different, so they have to be treated mm-hmm. differently, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, like you said, you know, there's... Are people happens. coming to you with a lot of songs now? Yeah. 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 To yeah. fight them off? That's very nice, yeah. Do you have any? <laughs> <laughs> we're always looking. We're yeah. always looking, too. So if somebody has good songs, be in touch. We're always looking. We're, yeah. Okay. Okay. And now, we are you all the tapes too? Are, are you, are you pretty much focused on uh, songs that haven't been recorded before? Is that would you rather do more of those than the, say, Tommy Gerald things? Or? Usually, yeah. Uh, our guests are the Nashville Bluegrass Band, and as I said, they're on Sugar Hill. What's what song you do next? I think Roland, you're uh, going to sing a song here. Huh? No, what is it? I ain't going down. I ain't going down. Oh yeah, this who, is a song. This song? I, uh, Phil Sampson in Oklahoma. He's a country rock player, and uh, I got to know him through the Country Gazette back in the '70s. And in Norman, Oklahoma, he used to play in, in a in a uh, near the campus OU campus. He used to play there weekends, and I used to go listen to him because he had a good a good band. I liked his guitar player, and he had a guy to play the the uh, the organ, the B five. Is that what you call it? B3 B3 it's what a wonderful sound but this guy was really country and country rock he wrote I Love Them Every One that was recorded by his big hit for him for, by Eddie Rabbit or somebody like that anyways but he had this song and I liked the lyrics to it and uh, but it was no, it wasn't a thing anything like we do it here it was like a big I to going down <laughs> you know it's just a big hard country thing but I liked the lyrics to it so I had it for a long time and I just pulled it out and these guys seem to think we could do something with it, so we did. <laughs> That's where the song came from. No one's ever recorded this but us. <clears throat> we, it's called I Ain't Going Down. We like to call it our anti-work song. Yeah, right. That's what it is. About not coal mining. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, it was in tune when I bought it.
seeping in, the water is leaking in, and the yellow birds aren't singing in the mines anymore. The timber is rocking down, but sometimes the mountain sounds like the whole world is coming down and covering me. guest of the Nashville Bluegrass Band and uh, I like that song. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, make that my anthem. I'm, I'm not going to work either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you guys um, well, let me rephrase that. When you get together in the studio is it pretty much hard work or do you all have as much fun as you do on stage? Because on stage you guys are absolutely having a good time. Well, I would say that when when the song's done, we're done pressing record, and it's and it sounds good, and we're happy the way it came out. Then we're having as much fun as, yeah. <laughs> as we do on stage. It takes a little longer to get there, though. Uh-huh. Do you, do you generally record live altogether? And... As much as we can, uh, we'll usually usually add harmony vocals after we've gotten the track. Uh-huh. Now I know you did the album with uh, Peter Rowan, which you mentioned earlier. Are there any other projects like that coming along? This uh... a couple of a uh, couple of one song, some interesting one song things have happened here uh, with yeah. a, a soundtrack for the Dead Man Walking movie uh, with Johnny Cash. Mm-hmm. Did an album on the uh, CD release of the soundtrack. I see. Uh, singing backup harmony and Roland played some mandolin on, mm-hmm. along with Ray Cooter. That was exciting. And also a song with Bernadette Peters. Really? Unusual collaboration. And that album's enjoyed out. Enjoyed that. And that's out. Is her that her, her album? Yeah. yeah. Her first one in, in quite a few That's her first one in quite a few years, uh-huh. really. Now, on the uh, latest album, Unleashed, you have a, a gospel number. Uh, how did that come about last month of the year, the Fairfield Four? That was a, a song that we uh, discovered on a tape that someone gave us uh, an old 78 recording. Mm-hmm. And uh, that song's been around and done a lot of different ways, and they were familiar with it also. Mm-hmm. Figured it would be uh, another song that we... We had also done one other song with them on our record. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so since it's a, the, a Christmas song, they have also included that on the, uh, the uh, Sugar Hill uh, Christmas uh, CD. What is the name of that? Tinsel Tunes. Tinsel Tunes. Yeah. Oh, I see on that as well. Now, the collective versions is, is on their album as well as yours, right? right? The same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pretty nifty. Our guests in the Nashville Bluegrass Band, I need to take just a minute out to tell everyone they're listening to KPFK Los Angeles, listener-sponsored Pacifica Radio for all of Southern California. We're at 90.7 on the FM dial. At 11 o'clock tonight, it's Echoes from a Deep Planet with Bonnie Barnett. Then at midnight, it's jazz all through the night from midnight till 6 a.m. tomorrow morning with John Brecko, the keeper of the archives. Once again, let me remind you that Monday through Friday at 4 p.m., it's Jerry Brown and We the People. That's right, the former governor of California, the man who describes himself as a re- recovering politician, is um, <laughs> interviewing people, taking your phone calls, and uh, just generally... Uh, talk show, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. And uh, he's just really enjoyable to listen to. I love listening to him. He's kind of excitable and and, and interesting and doesn't mince words at all. So oh. he's been there, you know. Yeah. What can you say? He's a recovering politician. <laughs> 
This is KPFK Los Angeles. I'm Howard Larman. Uh, at the controls are Peter Cutler and Stephen Barker. And our guests live from Studio A are the Nashville Bluegrass Band that record for Sugar Hill Records. How about another number? Okay. We'll do one we did, I think we did on our first album. We were talking about doing some of our older songs. Mm-hmm. This was... Uh, who wrote this? Jim Eanes. Jim Eanes. Jim Eanes wrote this. I think it was his first one of the first songs he ever wrote. He said he told us. It's called Baby Blue Eyes. Each night, there's tears in my pillow. I'm dreaming of your two baby blue eyes. While a broken heart I try to disguise Night after night My lonely heart's calling It's calling in vain For baby blue eyes I'll always keep A memory of you Visions of mine Blue as the sky That's why each night Tears on my pillow I'm dreaming of your Two baby blue eyes Good, thank you. Uh, our guests are Nashville Bluegrass Band, and I know uh, it's got to be that band members write original numbers. Uh, you don't seem to be recording any of 
Well, we uh, have on the Christmas uh, okay. thing that you mentioned, the tinsel tunes. Yeah. Alan wrote a song called The Christmas Story, and we, we recorded it yeah. on that. Uh, we recorded some instrumentals that Stuart had written yeah. and Alan written. Mm-hmm. What else? There's just so many good songwriters out there, and you hear all these songs that are, you know, you just got to do them. You hear a song, you got to do them. And, uh, We'd uh, like to have more of our own. Yeah. Uh-huh. You have any? <laughs> <laughs> if I had them, you could have them. <laughs> I'm working on one right now, but it's not done yet. Uh-huh. Uh, Stuart has a solo album on Rounder Records. Do you plan any more solo projects? Or? Yes. As soon as I finish this one I'm working on, I'm going to go in the studio and record it. Uh-huh. And maybe in about three years, I'll have another one out. <laughs> You're pretty busy in Nashville, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see your name all over the place. I love to play, so uh-huh. it works out nicely. Uh-huh. But you have the skills, you know. You, you, you're someone they can count on to deliver it, you know. So I know you get a lot of work in Nashville, and uh, when this band gets together and travels, uh, must be it must be hard on your calendar. Let's put it that way. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of juggling that goes on. There. Yeah, yeah. Our guests in the Nashville Bluegrass Band, they record for Sugar Hill Records. Where are you, where are you in terms of the next uh, Nashville Bluegrass album, band album? We're entering into the murky waters of finding material. Uh-huh. Just just dipping our toes in. Mm-hmm. Are there things that you recorded early on that you'd like to re-record? Or? Possibly in some, some situation, yeah. There are some songs we might like to re-record. Or, uh, you know, there might be a special album or a project would it be nice to do some of those older songs uh-huh. i think we have to wait till we get older so we can do a greatest hits album or something hey i'm old enough to <laughs> live versions there, there also may be some more recordings where we do take a song that's been recorded a lot yeah. and do it anyway because it's good like yeah. baby blue eyes has been you know flat and scruggs yeah. did that and we did it anyway because it was really good now i noticed at the ash grove last night you guys were having such a good time i I wondered if you'd ever given any thought to a live album. Yeah, mm. we've yeah. talked about it. Thought about yeah. That. Yeah. So, that may happen, you know. We made, there's so many uh, people, including members of this band, that have you know portable DAT recorders, and its technology has made it a lot easier. That uh-huh. You get enough recordings together over a period of time of live shows, and, and you're bound to come up with at least one that sounds decent <laughs> <laughs> enough to put on an album. Well, we That's cut a live album one time, and, but when we got it back from the label, by every third word was beep, yeah. beep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, I don't know. The Nashville Bluegrass Man? I can't believe that. Oh, we're nasty when we get that. Oh. <laughs> Let them loose on a stage and you never know what happens. Special yeah. guest, Millie Jackson. That's right. Yeah. Where, Jackson. Where's the, the hardcore... Nashville bluegrass band audience. I mean, do you find more reception in certain states or certain areas? Reseda. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a good fan base on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we've been playing out here ever since we've been a band, really, since our earliest, you know, years. Mm-hmm. And we have a pretty good following in, in, uh, out here in the West Coast. And also the Northeast are kind of hot spots for us. Mm-hmm. South, not so much. Not so you, much in the South. It seems to me you draw an audience other than the straight-ahead bluegrass audience, uh, yeah. a, a much broader audience. Than that's what we try to do. You know, that's what we're trying to do is just broaden the audience some. We, you know, we don't, we don't want to change it so much or, or try to you know cross over into something else. But it'd be nice to broaden the audience. I think it's yeah. well within our grasp. Mm-hmm. We're, we've been fairly successful at it so mm-hmm. far. Do you think that as you go on, you'll still be? Digging up the old gems like Tommy Gerald and I things like so. that. I hope so. I hope so. If we have, if we don't, then shame on us. Uh, and uh, I assume the record company's in tune with that. They, oh, they're yeah. not pushing you to do uh, yeah. no contemporary. Barry, Barry Poss and the Sugar Hill Records. Everybody at Sugar Hill Records is. They've always encouraged us to just do what we want. And basically, that's what we do. And we send it to them when we're done. Well, Barry's got all the publishing and all the Tommy Jarrell stuff, so he'd love to see us do as much of it as we do it, you know. Uh, you know, when you're standing on the outside, you don't realize some of those little intricacies of the music uh, music business. Our guests are the Nashville Bluegrass Band. What, uh, what number are you going to do next? Um, we've got an old-time banjo number here. And uh, this is a tune that, that I heard years ago and and then forgot it. 
as a matter of fact it might it might even inspire me to do a i, I thought about do, if i would ever do a like a solo record i'd call it forgotten tunes you know on the album you get about two-thirds of the way through the tune you go i just can't remember the rest of that one <laughs> and Stop. And just stop playing and spit on the floor. Yeah, and spit on the floor and go into the next one. But uh, <laughs> this is one that I was in this tune and cause uh, Stuart wrote a tune. Um, what is that? The new democracy. The new democracy. And I was messing around that tune in one day. And it reminded me of a tune that I'd heard years ago, and I couldn't remember. I think it was on like a red album that had a big sticker that said, Featuring Five String Banjo, mm -hmm. something like that. High Fidelity. Yeah, High Fidelity, a uh, stereo or a Rive stereo or something. Anyhow, I went around for about six months asking everybody I knew what the name of the song was, and nobody could tell me. Sonny Osborne couldn't tell me. Uh, ben Eldridge couldn't tell me. Nobody, no banjo players could tell me. And finally, I cornered. Ralph Stanley in Denton, North Carolina, just like stepped across his path and blocked his way as he was coming off the staff. I said, Ralph, you got to help me. It's driving me nuts. You got to tell me what this is. And I played a little bit of it for him, and he just stood there and kind of waited till I stopped my silliness, and he, he looked right at me and he said, Holiday Picking. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's, that's the name of the team. <laughs> yeah. So it goes kind of like this. Yes, live from KPFK Studio A out of the Nashville Bluegrass Band. You're listening to Folk Scene on KPFK Los Angeles. We're at 90.7 on the FM dial. I'd like to mention that next week our in-person guests, will have two of them, from Nashville singer-songwriter Casey Kelly and from Colorado Chuck Pyle. That's next week's in-person guests here on Folk Scene. Our engineers are Peter Cutler and Stephen Barker. And as I said, our guests are the Nashville Bluegrass Band. Did, did we discuss the idea of the name, the Nashville Bluegrass? Was any other names discussed at all? How could you get anything clever than that? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think it was a Nashville bluegrass band because uh, just anything else that we we'd come up with and initial was either too nasty or too stupid or too clever or too clever yeah <laughs> way too clever and i don't know i guess think at the time we were thinking about how many how many gigs we've played have, have gone out in, in various forms various bands and you'd show up and people would expect charlie daniels and or there's some yeah. kind of rock and roll so we wanted to make sure they knew what they were getting <laughs> if we we're gonna uh, get money and get gigs we yeah. want to make sure they knew what, we're, what they're getting so we just called the nashville bluegrass band just generic Mm-hmm. Well, you know, at the time that, that we were trying to come up with a name for this band, we'd been playing in Nashville for 10 years. You know, we'd slugged it out in the clubs, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, we came to town. Roland White was our hero. He'd come down and play with us. <laughs> and I'd been slugging it out with Pat for years. And, uh, you know, the other guys that, uh, you know, we'd been playing around with, and uh, we felt like we were the Nashville Bluegrass Band. I see. You know, and we and the, the other thing was is that nobody had ever taken that name. It was a coup d'état. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if we were Blitz. able to do that, you know, if we could do that, if we could, if we could, but only live up to the name, you know, mm-hmm. then it would give us something to do for the next fifteen, twenty years. So it's truth in advertising, and it's very fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so we are it, you what know. you, what you, you know, you read it. That's what you get. <laughs> Our guest in Nashville Bluegrass Band being Stuart Duncan on fiddle, Pat Enright on uh, lead vocal and uh, guitar, Gene LeBay on bass, Alan O'Brien on banjo, and Roland White on mandolin. They all sing harmonies, and uh, Roland and uh, Pat sing leads. And yeah. Alan too. And Alan too. He's I'm about sorry. To. Um, now, I know Stuart, he's from Santa Paula, yeah. and uh, Gene is from Redondo Beach, right? And Roland lived out here a long time, but I knew he was from back east uh, somewhere originally. Loose lips, Maine. <laughs> I, I came from the state of Maine. We came out here when I was 16, in 1954, and uh, I... I left in 1967 when Bill Monroe hired me, and I went to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And I've been there 29 years. It'll be 30 years next May. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been in Nashville, but I, I lived here for 13 years. Yeah. Were uh, your family played music, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Your father and my father and and a lot of his brothers. There were 17 of them in my father's family, and they oh. all played and sang. You know, but my father was kind of the leader of the pack. You know, he got them to. S- pick and sing some and then growing up we got to hear some of them play and play with some of them you know up in Maine and, uh-huh. and that's how it all began with my brothers two brothers Eric and Clarence and my sister Joanne also uh-huh. she played sang with us and uh, here we are mm-hmm. <laughs> Pat did you grow up with music too as well no uh, I grew up with just kind of an ordinary kind of you know leave it to beaver family uh huh Poor but poverty-stricken parents uh, in Huntington, Indiana, which is, you know, the hometown of Dan Quayle yeah. and the Dan Quayle Museum. And I grew up there, and I went to service in the late 60s and got out and drifted out to California and played out in San Francisco for a while. Mm-hmm. Then I moved to Nashville, same t- same uh, year Alan did, 74. Were you always focused on bluegrass? or mm, Not so much. Uh, you know, uh, back when I was in, in, in school, early 60s, I... You know, of course, you got a, a lot of folk music. There's a lot of folk music mm-hmm. on the radio, so I like that. I like folk music. I like country music. I remember, like, Hanky Williams at a very young age. Mm-hmm. And uh, I heard bluegrass, started hearing bluegrass in the 60s, kind of floating around, you know, in mm-hmm. the folk scene there. And uh, just took to it, you know, took to it. And we know Gino's uh, experience here in Redondo Beach, but we really don't know how... Uh, I know you played with your brother in, in the Tarzan Swing Band and... Uh, became the Tarzan String Band, right? And uh, uh, you've been on this program in many configurations. That's right. Uh, sometimes with Stuart, as a matter of fact. Several times. But how did music first come come to you? How did it was in the house. It was in our house. Everybody played something. Mm-hmm. And uh, my older brother had a lot to do with it, but uh, probably my mother had the most to do with it because she was always playing the piano or xylophone or... Mm-hmm. something like that and there was music in her family it's and it goes back uh, this family to the 1800s that there's been music and yeah. people that went to school for music and that kind of thing so it's always been around 
and that mm-hmm. so that's my earliest influences you know as a young child hearing music be played in the house whether they were records or as or as live mm-hmm. alan you're from north carolina is it that's right uh-huh. Reedsville, carlton haney country uh-huh <laughs> and you grew up with music well, actually, my folks forbid me to play, and so that's what drove me to do it. Uh, well, well, actually, my dad, he had an old fiddle up in the in the closet, and he'd get it out, uh, you know, maybe two or three times a year, and he'd play through his six tunes, which is, thinking back on it now, really kind of odd, because that was about all the playing he ever did. Hmm. But I had a lot of cousins and uncles, and they all played what they called string music. They didn't call it bluegrass. Mm-hmm. They called it string music. Yeah. And um, Troy Shelton, Alan Shelton's dad, Mm -hmm. was a tenant farmer on my uncle's uh, dairy farm. And, uh, of course, they thought that, uh, you know, around there that Alan Shelton hung the moon. And I suppose Mm -hmm. he did. But, yeah, I was around a lot of of string music. From the age of, like, uh, well, I started playing when I was 13. And from 14 on, that was, Mm -hmm. I followed it. And Stuart Duncan, who... um was a you did a lot of competitive playing right uh, a lot of contests and as a youngster i did a lot of contests and a lot of competitive playing <laughs> yes <laughs> Af- afterwards uh-huh. but you you won a lot of awards in fact you went as i remember you went to uh, ireland or scotland and played in contests over there as well as a youngster yeah i, d- I did and uh was the uh, was the uh, the junior champion in the national Scottish, uh, American Scottish yeah. fiddling champion. Yeah. Um, our guests are the Nashville Bluegrass Band and uh, how about another number? Okay. How about a song about murder? Ooh, which one? Gore-lore, <laughs> Gore-lore right? Well, no, we, <laughs> we, we, uh, we had to uh, think about this before we recorded it and but we didn't think too... We've, we decided we just better do it instead of think about it. And uh, we apologize if you get letters over this. Okay. okay. It's a southern thing. We're gonna, we'll try to make up for it in the next song after. We'll see if... A fellow that also lived in California named Don Humphreys wrote this, uh, and he's now a North Carolinian. This one's called Eva. Blackbirds and the Crows. Eva was a fast thing most everybody knew. While other girls were running wild, Eva flew. Her life was the fast lane, but it soon began to show. So I begged her with me to go to a little home here in Idaho with the blackbirds and the crows. One year we were happy and tried to keep our lives on track. But while I was looking to the future, Eva was looking back. Said she missed the old life And she was truthful, I suppose The truth was she could never leave The truth was the nights I'd grieve If I had to let her go Blackbirds sat on the fence line Crows flew through the sky I whispered low into Eva's ear Eva, you're gonna die She's a half a mile out A quarter across beneath No one knows who put her there But the blackbirds and the crows Folks come by, we sit around And I tell them how she's gone I tell them how she packed her bags and wrecked on happy home. Oh, I tell them she's down in Atlanta doing cocaine and God only knows. But Eva's not gone, she's here with me. Right here where she'll always be with the blackbirds and the crows. Blackbirds sat on the fence line, crows flew through the sky. I whispered low into Eva's 
say, Amy, you're gonna die. She's a half a mile out, a quarter across beneath those wheat field roads. And no one knows who put her there but the blackbirds and the crows. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I really like that song. And I think like 100 years from now, somebody's going to collect it as an old folk song, much as they do something like <laughs> Omi Wise or one of those kind of things. We have time for two more, and I understand you haven't answered that uh, song. Or? Equal time, as it were. Yeah. Equal it's time. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that may someday be a classic folk song. And yeah. This next one is a classic folk song for sure. It's a... Uh, Boy meets girl and girl shoots boy. It's uh, Leaving Home, old uh, Charlie Poole yeah. song. And we recorded this with David Grisman a number of years ago on an album called Home is Where the Heart Is. And uh, you call it Leaving Home. Of course, it's Frankie and Johnny. It's the story of Frankie and Johnny. We'll do that. Equal time.
from Studio A are the Nashville Bluegrass Band and we have time for one more number. Great, Howard. Uh, Howard, it's been great to see you and yes. you and Roz and also it's been great to do your show. And I appreciate it. appreciate you taking time out and I know you guys work on a busy schedule most of the time. It was also nice to see you both out last night at the Ash Grove on the yeah. mm-hmm. Santa Monica Pier. Uh, I hope that the uh, place gets... Uh, good support and yeah. can bring it acts like that. I think it's a really good thing I think people really need to support that club well Southern California needs a place like that yeah just like that <laughs> uh, one more would you yeah well, you mentioned one earlier yourself yeah. uh, the Lee Highway Blues yeah. I thought we'd oh, yeah. go ahead and do that on our way out here good Ross said she'd be mad if we didn't do it so we have to mm-hmm. do it here here it is thanks again yeah
I want to thank you all for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Our um, pleasure. Thank look you. For oh, having thanks for having us. Look forward to the next Nashville Bluegrass Band album in your return to Southern California. Yeah, thank you. This is KPFK Los Angeles. I'm Howard Larman. Here's Roz Larman.